Okay, question seven, which is number eight, says, in an experiment to verify the relationship between the electrostatic force, Fe means electrostatic force in this question, and distance R between two identical positively charged spheres, identical is in bold, the graph below was obtained. So in this graph, they do give us a heading. It's a graph of electrostatic force versus 1 over R squared. Remember, electrostatic says that the electrostatic force is directly proportional to the sum, I mean, the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the spheres. This sign means direct proportion, direct proportion relationship. And this sign also means direct proportion. So in order, we don't have a sign for inverse proportion. In order to indicate inverse proportion, we use one over that thing. 7.1.2 says, write down the dependent variable in this experiment. What is the dependent variable? Fe. Fe. Okay, that's correct because we know that on our x-axis we have the independent guy, independent, and on the y we have the dependent. Okay, that's good. So Fe is dependent, or answer this Fe. 7.1.3 for one mark says, what relationship between electrostatic force Fe and the square of the distance R squared between the charged spheres can be deduced from the graph? What is the relationship between Fe and R squared? It's not proportional. Very good, excellent. This is inversely proportional. Inversely proportional. Proportional. That's they're testing your intelligence there because they give you a direct proportion of Fe directly proportional to one over R squared. Then you have to know that actually this means that Fe is inversely proportional to R squared. Okay, very nice. And 7.1.4 says, use the information in the graph to calculate the charge on each sphere. What is the charge on each sphere? We go back to the information. It says the spheres are identical in bold letters. That means they are equal. So what is the charge on each one of them? How can we find that answer? From the graph you did analytical geometry in grade um, 10 I don't know if you already did that in grade 11 yet did you mm. no do you remember yes, you did it in grade 11 already no no do you remember it in grade 10 no. No. Okay. Do you mm. remember? Do you, rem, do you remember gradient? Mm. Yeah. So whenever you see a graph, a straight line graph, you should remember the word gradient. So, in order to, for me to solve for the charges, I have to involve gradient in my um, solving. Because I have a straight line, so whenever you have a straight line graph, straight line graph, you 100% going to need the gradient of that graph. Very important statement, and once again, it's going to be really useful for you in grade 12. Okay, so... Let's see. 
the equation we deal with for electrostatic force says electrostatic force is equal to k q1 q2 over r squared right yes. and if q1 and q2 are equal how can i write that value can write it as q as q squared because i have q times q right mm. yeah so now i have q i mean k q squared over r squared okay then i go back to the graph what is the gradient of the graph gradient the gradient is given by in mathematics you say m is equals to change in y over change in x so you remember this equation right yes yes so we go and look at our independent variable or let's say it dependent so that's our y we see that it's fe so we need fe on top change in fe over change in 1 over r squared because 1 over r squared is actually our x value okay what is this thing this is the last thing we are doing so just bear with me and then if you check what is fe over 1 over r squared what does that give us it's going to give us fe multiplied by r squared do you agree yes yes so going back to our equation fe is equals to kq squared over i mean over r squared so i can try to match the gradient i can try to match the gradient and say okay i can express this as fe and then i multiply by r squared then i'm left with k q squared so now i matched the gradient of the graph to my equation so let me call this actually equation one this equation two now the equations are equal to the same thing so i can just say so if i equate equation one to two i can just say gradient is equal to what i can say gradient is equal to what let's see if you kq squared. yes kq squared then now i can solve for the gradient because i know what k is and i can solve what the gradient is from the graph it means i can find my answer let me just quickly express q it's going to be the gradient over k then q will be the square root of the gradient over k and this expression is going to give me my answer but first of all what is the gradient gradient is changing y over changing x so from maths i'm going to go back to maths here I need to pick two points. I'll pick 0 and 0. And then I'll pick this other point that I see here. So my coordinates 0 and 0. My other coordinates. What is this coordinate that I highlighted? 0, 0, 0, 0, no. That's incorrect. I need the answer in coordinate form. Mathematics. Coordinate one. No, not quite. That point is made of one and zero comma zero zero five. So in coordinate form is going to be. It's going to be the x variable which is one and the y variable which is 
0, 0, 0, 0,005. This is what I mean by coordinate form. So 1 is to 0, 0, 0, 0,005. That's my x and my y. Okay, so I'm gonna need to communicate to your math tutor to really make sure you guys are good with maths because if you are lacking with maths, it's gonna be really hard for you to solve physics. And physics doesn't involve a lot of maths. You just have to know your maths. So for the gradient, change in y is going to be <clears throat> this y value minus this y value. Change in x is going to be this x value minus this x value. So I'm basically having 0, 0,005 minus 0 over. And then my x value is 1 minus 0. 1 minus 0. And solving this, I get a gradient of 0, 0,005. Supposed to get this the same answer if you choose any two points. Let's say I was to choose this point and this point. Supposed to get the same answer for gradients. Okay, and what you see here is that the points are not really on the line. So that's what experimental data will give you. The points are not really on the line. So you draw a line called a line of best fit. Basically, just fit a line throughout the points to average the points out. So when you do the gradient, you have to choose the points that are on the line. It's like this one that I'm highlighting with green. This one is exactly on the line. So you pick that one and zero, for example. Okay, so now that I have my gradient, I can just solve the question. Q is now equal to the gradient is 0, 0,005. The K, what is the value of K? And I have 10 to the power 9. 9 times 10 to the power 9. Okay, very good. Then this means Q, which is identical for both the spheres, is going to be equal to the square root of, okay, the square root of 0, 0,005. This is divided by 9 times 10 to the power 9. And this is equal to 7,45 times 10 to the power negative 7. 7,45 times 10 to the power negative 7 the units coulombs because we are finding the charge then let's see if according to this we got the same answer we got 7,45 they got 7,32 that is only just rounding errors you can see the power is the same and the first number is the same so that will be accepted. So the question is six marks. How are they going to mark that? They're going to give you a mark for expressing the gradient. They're going to give you a mark for expressing the equation. They're going to give you a mark for the gradient answer. They're going to give you a mark for equating the gradient to the equation. They're also going to give you a mark for this substitution. They're going to give you a mark for the final answer. So overall, you get six marks. Okay. Any question on this one? It was a bit long, but you kind of have to think about it. No. You are good. Yes. Okay. Make sure you are really good. Um, so yeah, that will be the last thing we do today. Next time, with the two hours, we'll revise everything else that was in term one. Okay, yeah, now we can call it a day. See you in the next lesson on Wednesday. Bye-bye.